And welcome back to our walkthrough of the Python Institute. This time we are working on lab number 3.1.1.12, uh, talking more about the if-then statement. Uh, and now we get to a kind of an interesting scenario. This is a lot closer to a real-world scenario that you might see in your life. Uh, so let's see, we've got objectives, familiarize with if-then statements or if-else statements, and branch control. Uh, and then building complete programs that solve simple real life problems. So we've got a scenario here. And we'll, let's see. Uh, once upon a time, there was a land, a land of milk and honey, uh, inhabited by happy and prosperous people. Makes people pay taxes, of course, their happiness had limits. The most important tax, called the personal income tax, or PIT for short, had to be paid once a year and was evaluated using the following rules. If the citizen's income was not higher than $85,528, the tax was equal to 18% of the income minus $556.02. This was the so-called tax relief. If the income was higher than this amount, the tax was equal to $14,839.02 plus 32% of the surplus over $85,528. So your task is to write a tax calculator. Uh, it should accept one floating point value called the income. And we can see they've actually given that to us already. Next, it should print the calculated tax rounded to full thalers. And we can see it already rounds the tax for us and prints out the output. Uh, we simply need to do the calculation. Uh, note the happy country never returns money to its citizens, so if the tax is less than zero, uh, then that means it's zero. There's no tax at all, um, so take this into account during your calculations. Uh, and then it gives us some nice income sources that we can choose from to calculate this out. Now this is probably a good time to start talking about how to actually start planning calculations such as this. Um, how do we actually make sure that we are working this properly um, before getting into code and start scripting things around and getting kind of lost as far as what we're doing? Uh, so this is when I like to start talking about a flowchart. Uh, so I'm just giving myself a, a little space to draw over here. And what we do here is, is I like to draw out this process uh, on a piece of scratch paper just to make sure I know how I want to do this, to make sure it makes sense of what I'm doing before I jump in and start doing it. Kind of like digging a hole, you want to make sure you're in the right spot before you start digging. Otherwise, you spend a whole lot of time digging the wrong hole and then a whole lot of time filling it back up. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So in this script, we're going to start off with some sort of a start portion uh, where we're going to get um, their income. All right, so we get the income from somebody and then it goes into a question of whether it's greater than 85,528. Sorry, not higher than, so less than, less than or greater than. Uh, and so basically what we need to do is we need to compare, we need to evaluate whether the income was greater or less than that amount. And so we need to say greater than, greater than 85,000 comma 528 dollars. Now in a, when you're doing a flow chart, which is kind of what we're drawing here, Generally, what you do is you use a diamond type symbol to describe a flowchart. Uh, and the reason for this is because now you have one input coming from the income statement there, and then you can have a couple of outputs. Uh, for instance, we can have a yes over here and then a no over there. Uh, so basically, we're able to branch out the execution of the script from one direction or the other. Uh, okay, well, we'll start off with this first scenario. So we'll start off with the no. Uh, so the income was not higher than $85,528. Uh, therefore, the tax is equal to 18% of the income. So that means we need to calculate 18%. Of their income. That's going to come in here and it's going to go like that. Uh, and then minus $558.02. So minus 
556, excuse me, 0 0.02. And that's pretty much the process if they did not make more than that amount. If they did not make more than 85,528, that's pretty much the process. We uh, That I would work through is I would first calculate 18% of their income. And then I would take 556.02 minus that from that 18% in order to give their total tax amount. Um, now, obviously, there is going to be a rounding function down here that this goes into uh, before we finally print out the output. Uh, so now let's do the other branch there. Um, is the income greater than 85528 And if so, then that means that we go off to the left of our question there. Uh, so let's see. Then the tax is equal to $14,839. So tax equals $14,839. So that's going to be the first thing we calculate out. That's pretty easy. Oh, what? Plus two cents. I didn't write that in there. We'll remember that two cents. Uh, then 32% of the surplus over 85,520. Okay, so that means we need to figure out, let's see, surplus. Calculate surplus. Actually, instead of writing, I'm going to say income. Right, income minus 85,528. And then what did it say? 32%. So calculate 32%. And then finally into the rounding function. And one last step, I realized I'm missing the zero. What happens if you make zero? Uh, in which case, if this is gonna be, um, uh, let's see, tax greater than tax less than zero, maybe? We'll put another comma in here, comma in here, it says check for zero. I'll just write check for zero. Then we'll know what that means later. Now this looks kind of ugly, and it really, really kind of is. Uh, but this is kind of the process I might walk through while preparing myself to write a script such as this. And it might just be a couple of pieces of scratch paper. I may go through three or four different iterations of this to make sure that the flow makes sense. That I know, do for instance, um, do I calculate out, let's see, do I calculate out the 18% and then minus the 556? Or do I minus the 556 and then calculate the 18%? I don't know. Um, do I, over here, do I create the, the tax value of 14839 and then figure out what their income gap is? Or do I figure out the income gap and then add in the tax value? Um, you know, there's there's could be a lot of questions here that could be fairly confusing if you don't take a second to think about it before you start writing it in. Um, so anyways, I think that's about the process we'll go. Let's see what we can do as far as writing this out. So um, we've got the income up there. It goes, goes ahead and it prompts it for as a float and gives me my income variable. Uh, so now I need to start writing some code. Very first thing we had was a uh, comparison of the income. So it's going to be if income and what was it? Less than or equal to 85,528. Then that's going to be, I'll actually just put a comment right here just to fill it in. And this is um, the lesser of tax. And then I'll do an else. So if they're making more than 85528 then this is going to be the greater tax. So just that I've got those comments in there, uh, let's add in... You know, one last one, let's go ahead and say if tax less than zero. So if their taxable amount is less than zero, then we'll just say tax equals zero. All right, so if their income is less than or equal to 85,528, this is the lesser of the taxes, and it said I need to figure out 18% of their income and then subtract $556.02. 
So um, I'm going to create a temporary variable here. I'm not going to, I don't want to assign it to tax just yet. Um, oh, maybe I do. Yeah, actually I do. Okay, so tax equals, and we said 18%. So I have their income, excuse me, income times, and then 0.18. Now 18% uh, is actually 0.18. So for instance, if, if you had a dollar and I said, give me 50% of your dollar, then that would be 50 cents. That would be 0 0.50. Dollars, right? If you had a dollar and I said, give me 18%, then that would be 18 cents. So same thing, 0.18 is 18% of the income. You may see some people write that as 0 0.18, which looks really pretty in all the books and might make it a little bit more readable, but doesn't really change the process. Uh, okay, so that's 18% of the income, and then we also know that the tax is minus $556.02. So tax equals tax minus 556.02. So that's 18% of their income, right? On line number five right there. And then minus $556.02, so that's on line six. Hopefully that works for me. All right, and then line number seven, I'm sorry, uh, next section, uh, with for the greater tax. Uh, okay, so let's see, if the income was higher than this amount, the tax is equal to $14,839.02. Well, let's see, tax equal 14,839.02. Plus 32% of the surplus over 85,520. I'm going to create a new temporary variable here. I'm going to call it surplus. And I'm going to equal that to income minus, so whatever their income is, minus the 85,528. And you know what? Just, just to make this easy, I'm going to call uh, create another variable called surplus tax. And that is equal to surplus, surplus times 0.32. So that'll be 32% of the surplus tax. I'm sorry, sur taxed surplus amount. Uh, and then tax equals tax plus surplus tax. And I think that makes sense. Now I can definitely streamline these. I could combine a whole lot of these lines together, but for right now, I think this is a pretty good process. So let's walk through this really quick. Um, see if it's less than 85,000. So we'll have to say not higher than, less than, which means, I'm sorry, not higher than, which means it could equal 85,528. So that's the less than or equal to. Uh, so 18% of the income. The tax is equal to income times 0.18 um, minus 556. So tax equals tax minus 556. All right. Uh, the next one, if the income is higher than this amount, tax is equal to 14839 and 2 cents. All right, line number nine there. Plus 32% of the surplus. So we have to figure out what the surplus is. The surplus is their income. So if they make 90000 then that would... The surplus would be almost 5,000. Uh, and then 32% of that. And then we add that into their tax. Uh, lastly, if, if the tax is less than zero, we just say zero. All right. Uh, it then rounds it out for us and prints it out for us. Let's see if that works. So let's see. They start off 10,000. So let's go ahead and run that. So 10,000, uh, that is less than 85,539. So it figures out 18% of it and then subtracts 556 for 1,244. All right, let's try, what is this, 100,000. Let's 
And since 100,000 is definitely greater than 85, then that means it took this second route here. So it should be 14,839 plus whatever the difference is between the, the their income and the cap. And that seems to match their output. Uh, what happens if we go really low and only 1,000? Well, in that case, it started going through. It actually calculated all this. We didn't see it, but it actually calculated this and came up with the tax value and then finally said, you know what? That's it's less than zero. We're not giving money back. Um, it's ours now. You're keeping it. Therefore, the tax is zero. And then if we're really trying to game the system, we can say, no, in fact, I lost money this year. Government says, no, nah, that's too bad. All right, so a couple of items there to, to think about. Um, it's, it's definitely an if-then statement. It is the process of trying to figure out how to convert verbiage, how to convert English language words uh, into math, uh, into programmatical processes. And again, this, these could definitely be streamlined. Um, we could probably put all that into one line right there. Uh, and then same thing right there, put all that into one line. Uh, so it could definitely be streamlined and optimized. Um, but, uh, by having the flow chart there, I think that helped keep us on track and understanding of what it was that we were trying to do originally.